This is the EDAN IM60 multi-parameter machine available from VetDirect. These are the components needed to set up the machine. We have the pulse oximetry lead, the battery, the blood pressure lead, the blood pressure cuffs, the temperature probes, the water trap and sampling line, and the ECG leads. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to insert the battery. On the opposite side to where the wires go in, you take this out, you pop it in this way so the ribbon is at the end, you flip this to the side, and you let it sit like that. This is the water trap and the sampling line for the capnograph. So what we're going to do is you see we have the two holes here that are going to correspond with the two holes in the machine. You pop it into there. This is a Lua lock. So it means it will lock onto this by a simple twist. We then have this end. Again, this is a Lua lock. If I can open it. And this will attach on to the elbow connector that will attach to your patient. Now one thing I would mention with the water trap and sampling line is that this needs to be changed every four weeks or every 100 hours of surgery, whichever comes first. That is because it does get a build up of moisture in the water trap and in the line and by doing this you will ensure that you will get accurate capnograph results. Next, I'm going to talk you through how to place the temperature probe. You will see on the side of the machine you actually have two um, holes for the temperature. This does mean that you can use more than one temperature probe at once. So you can choose if you want to do just a rectal temperature, just an esophageal temperature, or both. It does not matter where you put your temperature probe if you are only using one. It can be T1 or T2. So this goes into the machine. And this is the end that you will connect to your patient. So again, rectally or esophageally, and these can be cleaned and reused. This is the tubing for the non-invasive blood pressure. So you will see on the side of the machine, you have NIBP. So this end here, which has got a little twisty bit, is going to attach to the machine. So you pop it on, you hold it, and you twist it, and that is then attached to the machine. We have this end that attaches to the cuff, which then attaches to your patient. These are the blood pressure cuffs that correspond with the EDAN IM60 machine. And it's really important to note down what cuff corresponds to what size on the machine. So all you need to know, and I will explain this in a bit more detail later, is that the red one or the number five is classed as big. The orange or the number one is classed as small. And your blue, your green, and your turquoise, so your two, three, and four, are classed as middle. This will become a lot clearer when I show you the machine shortly. Next, I'm going to talk to you about SBO2 setup. So this actually comes in two halves. So you have this half which will attach to the machine, and this half which will attach to the patient. So all you're going to do is open up this plastic tab, pop that in so that the shape corresponds with inside, and then you're going to shut that down. Here is the SBO2 section of the machine. Pretty straightforward. You pop it in and it clicks so that you know it is secure. Now I'm going to show you how to connect the ECG leads. So here you can see there is a little slot. This marries up with the machine. You pop it in there, give it a push, and you're ready to go. So there you have it. That is how you attach all of the leads to the IM60. And now I'm going to show you how to use the machine itself. Okay, so this is the main screen of the IM60. So you will see that it does have touch screen functionality, but also for those that don't like touch screen, you do have a dial that you can use as well. So I'm going to talk you through the basic functionality of the machine. On the top right hand side of the machine, we have two lights. The left hand side one will flash blue if there is a problem with your machine and you will see that there is a corresponding error message on the touch screen. On the right hand side it will flash amber or red if there is a problem with your patient so that is definitely one to keep an eye on. The reason I've got the blue error warning but not the light is just because my machine is plugged in but not attached to a patient. If it was attached to a patient then it would mean there is an issue with the machine and you need to get that sorted. 
At the top of the screen you can see there is what looks like a trolley or a small bed. If you click on that, that is how we are going to admit our patient. Now MRN is just your patient number, so the practice management system number. Doesn't matter if you enter it or not, but you can if you wish. Last name and first name, if you want to ensure that your patient's name is at the top, but again, it doesn't necessarily matter. Gender, you don't need to worry about. Doctor, you don't need to worry about. These two are the most important, so we have type and cuff type. So as you can see, if we click the drop down on type, that is where you will select feline or canine. Then if you select the drop down on cuff type, this is where those sizings of the cuffs come in really important. So as we explained previously, big is the red one, and it's the only one that's classed as big. Small is the little orange one, and that's the only one that's classed as small. The three in the middle are all classed as middle. So it's really important that when you select your patient, you select the correct cuff type that you are going to be attaching to your patient. Next, I'm gonna talk you through the touchscreen menu at the bottom. First of all, we have an admission button. So if you click the admission button, it comes up with a pop-up that says, press yes to create new patient profile by clearing all current patient data. By clicking yes, it will clear the information that you've put in for your patient so that you can start a new one. So if you click yes, this will come up with a pop-up that is a quick admit. So all this does is it gives you the important stuff that you need. So as we discussed, type and cuff type. So if you're in an emergency or you're in a situation where you don't want to put the patient name, etc., in, then you can just do this. So again, you can select canine or feline and cuff type and just click yes. The next button along on the menu is trend graph. So if we click on that, what it will do is it will bring up your patient data in a graph. And down the left hand side, we have some drop down menus. So if you want to see a graph of SpO2, you can select SpO2. If you also want to see one of blood pressure, you can see a graph of blood pressure as well. If we were going to print at this point, you would hit record if you had a printer connected and that would print your results for you. Next to trend graph, we have trend table. Exactly the same premise. What it will do is it will bring up your patient data into a table. And again, from here, you can hit record to print. You can also hit trend graph, which will take you back to the graph button. And on trend graph, if you click trend table, it will flip you back to the trend table. Next along the list, we have alarm review. If you click alarm review, what it will do is it will give you a list of all the reasons the alarm has gone off. So if you heard the alarm beeping, you were out of the room, or you weren't able to see what the problem was, you can go back here and it will tell you exactly what the alarm was beeping for. Next along the list, we have NIBP review. So this is a non-invasive blood pressure review. So again, all this is going to do is it's going to give you a breakdown of your blood pressure readings for your patient. And if you wish, you could hit record and that will print via the printer. If we click on the arrow, at the end of the touchscreen menu, it will take us along to another page. So here we have a button that says standard. All this is going to do if you click it, is it's gonna bring you back to this screen. So I was already on this screen, so it didn't do anything for me. If I was to go onto this screen and then thought I wanted to go back to my standard screen, you click that, it will take you back to that main screen. Next along the line is trend screen. So if we click trend screen, what it's going to do is it's gonna bring up your parameters you've already got, but it's also gonna pop some graphs in there for you. So as we looked at earlier, you do have the functionality to be able to look at trend graphs. What this will do is give you live real-time graphs of your patient data. Next along the list, we have large font. If we click on this, all it does is it gives you a smaller amount of parameters. However, they are in larger font. And what you can do, if the parameters aren't on there that you are wanting to measure, you can click the drop down and you can change them to tailor it to your patient and to your needs. We have vital. So if we click on vital, all that's going to do is bring up the vitals. So it's not gonna be your standard screen where you have every single parameter. In the case of my machine, it just has heart rate, SpO2 and non-invasive blood pressure. Next along the line, we have module switch. If you click on module switch, all this is going to do 
is you can tailor the standard screen to what you want to see. If you want to see everything, then have everything ticked. If you're not going to be using SBO2 or you're not going to be using the capnograph that day, you can untick it and then come out of that and that will set your standard screen to how you want to see it. Next we have the last bits on this menu. So we have key volume. So again, if we click key volume, you can turn it up or down and that just means that you're going to have some noise when you click the buttons. So again, pretty straightforward. You can select it and select how bright you want the screen to be. We do recommend if you have it not plugged into the mains and you are running it off a fully charged battery to have the brightness on as low as is possible for you to be able to see well so that you don't run the battery down. The next button is standby. I'm not going to press that right now, but what that will do is it will put the machine into standby. The next button along is beat volume. So what that's going to do, mine is currently off, but again, you click it, you can turn it up, and all that's going to do is when you have the sound of the heartbeat, it's how loud you want it to be. The last button on this screen is night mode. So if we click night mode, all it does is it dims it slightly and it brings up the brightness on these buttons here. Next, we're gonna click on this menu button here. So if we click on that menu button, it brings up different options. A lot of these different options are a repeat of what we've already gone through, but I'm just gonna show you them for reference. So if we click on patient setup, all that's going to do is it's another way of admitting your patient. So you can do a quick admit or you can do the more lengthy admit by clicking new patient. Next, if we go to review, again, this is where instead of pressing the buttons down the bottom, you can look at your trend graphs, trend tables, alarm review and other reviews as well. If we then go to display setup, then you don't really need to change anything here at all, but it's just another way of being able to see your standard screen, your trend screens, your large font, or your vitals. If we then go to system setup, you can change your key volume here, and you can also go into module switch, which is where we change our standard setup. If we go to removable device is for your printer. We don't have one here, so we won't be covering that today. If we skip maintenance for a second, because I'm going to come back to that shortly. If we go to alarm setup, then what that does again is alarm volume. You can choose how loud your alarm is going to be. And if we go into alarm options, here is where you can look at your different alarms for your different parameters. And we can tailor these to your patient, which I will go into shortly. Next, I want to talk to you about maintenance. So if we click on maintenance, you're going to click on user maintain. It will ask you for a password. The password is super simple and easy. It's A, B, C. Click OK and it will bring you up with the user maintain options. Now you do not need to touch anything in here apart from a couple of sections. If we go to color setup, this is everybody's favorite option. This is where you can change the color of your parameters to suit your needs. You may have members of staff that are partially or fully color blind, may not be able to see certain colors. So this is a really useful tool to tailor it to what is easiest for you and your staff members. If we come out of there and go to alarm setup, what this does is you can change how long your alarm is paused for if you mute it. Now there is a mute button along the buttons at the bottom, which I will show you shortly. But what you can do is you can have it paused for 60 seconds, 120 seconds, 180 seconds, or permanently. We would not recommend having it muted permanently because if you forget to turn it off and there's a problem with your patient, then you will not be notified. So we would always recommend having it on around 60 seconds. Okay, so we're now going to come out of this user maintain. And that is it for the menu section. Okay, so now I'm going to talk you through the different parameters and how to tailor these to your patient. But one thing I want to mention before we start is can you see here on the temperature parameter, we have a red triangle with a cross through it. 
This means the alarm is off. So this is a really important visual to get used to um, because if this is turned off, it means that if there is a problem, it is not going to sound the alarm at you. So to turn this back on, if we click into the parameter, this is the temperature parameter. So you can click alarm setup and here we have switch. Currently it is switched to off. If we switch it to on and exit out, you will see that this is flashing because it's saying the temperature is low. It's not actually attached to a patient, but if it were, the temperature is too low. So you will see that this is now turned to a triangle without a cross through it. So that means the alarm will sound if there is a problem. So we're just going to turn that back off. And now what I want to show you is how to tailor your parameters to your patient if you need to. So if we go into heart rate, for example, you will see here, if we go to alarm setup, all of these parameters have an alarm setup within if you just click on the parameter. You will see there is a tube here, and because of the patient setup we selected, which I believe was feline and potentially a middle cuff, this has already preset the parameters to that patient. What you can do is you can actually change these. So this is currently set so that the alarm will sound if the heart rate goes above 196 or below 90. If you know that you naturally have a patient that is tachycardic, bradycardic, you can go in, you can change these parameters to suit the needs of your patient so that it is not sounding the alarm at you every few seconds. You can set up alarms by going into each parameter. However, if we go back to heart rate, you can actually go through them just by this drop down menu on the left hand side. So if you wanted to change your parameters for your blood pressure, your respiration, your SpO2, you can do it via this without having to click back in every single time. On the heart rate, you can choose whether you want to do three or five lead ECG. And whilst we're on the subject of ECG, it's really important to get an accurate respiration rate. You must have the ECG connected. You can do this on a three lead ECG, but it must be connected in order to get an accurate respiration rate. One more thing I want to cover while we're looking at parameters is the capnography. So you must always ensure that the work mode is in measure. Sometimes the machines can arrive in standby. So go into S, uh, ETCO2, click work mode, and just ensure that it's on measure. Okay, so NIBP, which is non-invasive blood pressure, I just want to show you, if we click into there, then you will see here that this is set to inflation mode auto. So what that means it's going to do is it is going to automatically take your blood pressure of your patient at every one minute interval. You can change these intervals and you can have the blood pressure being taken every 480 minutes if you wish. But most places have it every minute and this is set to auto which means once you've set your patient up it will automatically take a blood pressure reading. What we recommend when hooking your patient up to the machine is initially taking a blood pressure reading manually. What I mean by manually is we've obviously got the machine set up to take it automatically, but when you've got your patient connected and the cuff is secure, click the NIBP button down here, and what that's going to do is it's going to take an initial reading so that we can ensure that you get accurate blood pressure results. This will not affect the automatic one minute intervals, and also this button is really useful if you are in an emergency situation and your machine is set to take blood pressure at longer intervals than a minute, but you need a blood pressure reading right now, click this button and it will take one for you straight away. Lastly, we have the buttons at the bottom of the machine. This button is the on and off button, and here you can see how much battery life you have left, so if it's on green, you are fully charged. Here we have the mute button. If you press this button, it will mute your machine for the specific amount of time you have asked it to mute. If you want to unmute it, just click it again to turn it off. Here we have the NIBP or the non-invasive blood pressure button. Again, we've already discussed how to use this, but at any point you can take a blood pressure by just clicking this button. 
Here, if we click trend, this will take you to trend table or to a trend graph, whatever you prefer. Freeze is if you want to freeze and have a quick glance and snapshot of where your patient is at in that time. Record is if you were to print. And menu will take you back to the same menu as on the touch, touch screen functionality. Also, if you don't want to use the touch screen, as discussed, you can use the dial on the bottom right hand side. And instead of clicking, you would just press this in and it will take you into whatever section you are on.